Today's guest and I are going to go behind the scenes a little bit and talk about some controversial topics. So stay tuned. Welcome back. My name is Sarah. This is the Sarah Kleiner Wellness YouTube channel. And today's guest is Justin from Extreme Health Radio. Now, Justin has been podcasting since 2012 and has a really great backstory as to why he got into alternative health. And I actually consider it alternative, alternative health. That's the realm that we play in. We don't even play in alternative health anymore, but we really dive into some of these topics. Now, I do want to let you know, YouTube audience, that I did cut out bits of this interview because I was afraid that YouTube would delete my entire channel if we talked about some of these topics. So yes, we talk about some controversial things here in the episode, but if you want the full unedited version, go to my audio only podcast. I'm going to link that down in the show notes for you. It's on Apple, Spotify, Google, all the podcast platforms. So if you want that full unedited episode, make sure you check out that podcast and subscribe because anytime I talk about a topic that's super controversial and use specific words, I'm going to be very cautious about my YouTube channel and the content that I put on it so that I don't lose my channel and I don't lose this amazing connection with my YouTube audience. So thank you so much for being here, for listening to today's episode. I wanna thank really quickly a couple sponsors of today's episode. The first one is going to be Viva Rays. Now, in this episode, we talk extensively about the importance of protecting your circadian rhythms and having a healthy light environment. Viva Rays is my go-to source for protecting my circadian rhythms. You can use the code YOGI to save 15% on those circadian glasses. And they are just a fantastic, high quality brand that I trust. So again, check them out down in the show notes. Second sponsor of today's show is going to be Optimal Carnivore. Absolutely love their organ meat complex, as well as their brain nourish product, which has beef brain and lion's mane in it, known to increase BDNF or brain derived neurotropic factor, basically to help you with brain fog, help your brain run more efficiently. So check them out and use code carnivore uppercase Y to save 10% over at Optimal Carnivore. Let's go ahead and jump into this episode with Justin. I hope you enjoy it. Hello, everybody. Welcome back to the show. Super excited about today's guest because I'm actually a really huge fan of his show. So Justin of Extreme Health Radio, thank you so much for being here today. Oh, thank you. I really appreciate it. Thanks for inviting me on. I really appreciate it. Yeah, I'm I'm so excited to chat. We've already been chatting for like half an hour and even yeah. <laughs> listening. I'm like, I gotta hit record because this yeah. whole like time period that we have to be recording is gonna go by. We're just gonna it's gonna go quick. Yeah. Yeah, we're just gonna be talking. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah, that's awesome. Yeah, I have that too. Um with you know, a lot of times when I record myself, I'll end up like I remember I, I interviewed um Dr. Robert Kassar. Um, mm -hmm. I don't know if you're familiar with him. But we must have talked for like two hours after the show. Um, yeah. After we, he knew we hit stop recording and we've talked for like two hours. It was insane. Yeah. 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 That's yeah. one of the cool things about podcasting is that you just really get to meet some amazing people. You get to meet some, some, <laughs> you get some interesting situations as well, but you really get to meet some super amazing people. Yeah. And it's cool. Like, it, it's cool to be a part of this group because for a while there, before this big C little V thing started happening a couple of years ago, I was kind of, I wasn't getting burnt out because I was always interested in my own health, but like putting out the information, I was getting a little bit burnt. Um, and this is kind of this whole thing just kind of reignited the flame, you know, of all this, because obviously this is always about health, you know? And right. so, um, I tried at the very beginning to wake people up. I don't know if you did, uh, to no avail, just fell on deaf ears. No one wanted to listen. And I'm just like, oh my gosh, no one wants to hear, yeah. you know, here I am. I've been involved in this since Oh three and no one wants to hear anything I have to say about it. That's, and I just thought, wow, people are really lost right now. You know, it's interesting because I, I feel like taking care of your health right now is one of the most revolutionary acts you could do or rebellious yeah. acts, you know, that you can do. Because otherwise you're just sitting in front of the TV, listening to a guy like, you know, Dr. Fauci tell you what to do. And we all know what the end result of that is, you know? So it's, um, you know, last night I was like, okay, do I go to bed earlier than I normally do? Or do I do a sauna? And I've, I realized like, okay, well, if I do a sauna, it's imp impairing my sleep, but I really want to get it in. So building little disciplines, I think is like, you know, taking care of your health is so critical right now, you know? Yeah. 
Yeah, it really is. And I think a lot of people, like I said, with the kind of waking up side, people are just really hungry for information about their health that doesn't involve taking a bunch of medications. Like people are really interested in that. And I've kind of, and I gone down this rabbit hole of even letting go of a lot of the supplementations and lab testing and, you know, even the stuff the functional medicine world is doing, I've kind of stepped away from, from even that a little bit. Yeah. Yeah. I'm, I'm with you on that too. Like a lot of people like to, you know, get every level tested and ch check their genes and their DNA and all this stuff. And, you know, to me, I, I feel like the more someone is interested in that, the less connected to themselves they are. Yeah. Because I feel like at a deep level, a visceral level, deep down, if you're really quiet with yourself, you can know if a food is good for you or bad for you, to, you know, in the moment, like you, you know, but we're just so busy. We're talking, we're talking to our kids, you know, be quiet, you know, talking to your spouse. And then you just eat the food without thinking. Yeah. I've gotten that way with fitness trackers too, because I used to be obsessed with my aura ring and my aura ring data. And then yeah. when I got pregnant, I was laying in the bathtub and I noticed it had this like little green light that was emitting off of it. Right. The new mm -hmm. one. And I was like, I don't think that's really good. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> Knowing yeah. what blue and green lights do, do yeah. I need to have this on emitting this light on my skin, on my body? Like I know if I slept well, I know how many, you know, I don't need to know how many steps I took. And I think it can yeah. be helpful to check in on those things. And aura ring is probably the least harmful because <laughs> you can put it on airplane mode, but I think we get so addicted to the data all the time of having to yeah. know, you know? Well, if you're Dave Asprey and you want to live to your 150, you got to have that data, you know, the, that data. <laughs> it's like, right. you got to be able to check the numbers, you know? Right, exactly. <laughs> yeah, yeah that's what's going to do it. <laughs> I know. It's, um, yeah, I've, I've never really been drawn to all the blood testing and all that kind of stuff. It's too much for me, you know? I just feel like, you know, reconnecting with nature is always the answer for everything. And yeah. it may not be enough to get someone over the hump, you know, but it, it, it is ultimately the foundation that has to be there. Like you can't, you can't just supplement your way out of an unhealthy, toxic environment. Like you just can't do it, you know? And, and so, too. yeah. And diet. Yeah. Diet as well. You know, and before we started recording, we we're talking about the impact that wearing blue blocking glasses and yes. mitigating light has. And it's like, it's, it's, it's really crazy to me to, to watch people go into like a grocery store at nine o'clock at night under those fluorescent lights. It's unbelievable. Yeah. <laughs> How do yeah. they do it? Yeah. <laughs> I mean, even during the daytime, it's hard. I, I had to this uh, past September, like I remember the amount of times I've been to a Target store in the last year. <laughs> yeah, yeah. But I had to go to Target because it was my niece's three-year-old niece's birthday. And I'm like, oh crap, I don't, I didn't get her anything. I didn't order anything. I got to go to the store. And so I walked into the Target and I felt nauseous, just like psh, the lights, all the scents, you know, like yeah. there are just all these perfumes and scents and st everywhere. And uh, I literally felt nauseous going into Target because I hadn't been to one in so long. I just, I'm so used to just ordering what I need <laughs> and having I a know, it's. It's weird though, too, because at some visceral level, we should be able to withstand some sort of oxidative stress like that. Like we should yeah. be more resilient than we are. Yeah. Um, but at the, on the other side of the coin, it's interesting because it's almost like, you know, I used to do a raw food diet. So the cleaner you get, the less foods that you can, you know, uh, right. deal with. Yeah. Tolerate. And so, you know, it's almost as if you've been eating a super clean diet and you go eat and eat McDonald's, you know, when right. you go into like a target, you know, Right. but I, I don't know what it is, but all I know is like, I can't go in there. If I like, there's no way I could go in there at night without some sort of glasses on. No you way. To. Yeah. I, yeah. I, luckily I had my glasses in my purse at target and I like yeah. <laughs> slapped them on my head. And like, okay. I think I can get this gift and get out of here. <laughs> but, yeah, totally. Yeah. And I think we just get, I mean, I think we're so used to like the low lying stress that we don't really realize how it affects us until we're in that situation like with non-native emf you know having my house hardwired i can feel when i when the wi-fi is on like my body can actually feel the difference now when there's no wi-fi on and when it's off it's mm -hmm. it, but i i lived with wi-fi on all the time for years and years and never you know never thought it was making an <laughs> impact but now i can actually tell i could i don't sleep as well and it's yeah, it, I think it's just a low-lying stress our bodies kind of get used to. 
Yeah, it's it's wild. I, I'm that way too. Like I can definitely feel when because I have my uh, router turned off at night and I put it in a Faraday cage. And yeah. the next step is to hardwire everything. But we're in kind of a duplex and we have both sides of it. So we got to get some wiring and cable ran through the walls and stuff like that to get it working right. But I'm the same way. I can't I can't be next to a router. You know, I got to open the windows as much as I can get outside and just at least have that little break every hour, like just a two or three minute, you know, outside side is something yeah. yeah to reset that circadian clock you know yeah it really is important well cool well you know i just wanted to bring you on because i love your show so much and i just wanted to kind of talk to the guy behind the show and and <laughs> how did you even get interested in you've been doing podcasting first of all for a really long time right yeah. Yeah. So I got started, I started the show in 2012, I think it was May or no, August, somewhere around there of 2012. So near the end of 2012 is, is so going on 10 or 10 plus years now. Um, and so the kind of short story is that in 1995, my mom was diagnosed with non-Hodgkin's lymphoma. And at that time I was 20 years old and I was like, this is I, like something just didn't make sense, you know, like, why did she and then right after that, our dog, um, he had lymphoma as well, and he died. Oh. And we're trying to figure out like, wh where did this come from? You know, she was a lifelong smoker. Um, and so I know that had to have played some role, we don't know how much, but that had to have played some role. And but then I realized she was spraying like that uh, glyphosate melathion or whatever it was in the backyard, um, you know, the roundup stuff, and she would spray the flowers. And so there had to be a connection to that as well. Um, and my dog got diagnosed with it, and he died shortly thereafter. Wow. Uh, and so I knew something was wrong, you know, and I watched her go through chemo. Mm -hmm. And I'm like, dude, this is unbelievably barbaric, but in, in my 20 year old mind, I, I couldn't, you know, piece it all together. And so I watched her age probably 15 to 20 years in a matter of six months, you know, she would walk from the kitchen to the couch and she had to stop out of breath, you know, lost all her hair. And it was just, and then she went through, like she was given a less than 10, 10% chance of survival. And, um, and she had the bone marrow transplant. She had the um, stem cells. She had the chemo, the radiation, the surgery, all that stuff. And um, and so I just knew something was wrong. And I remember asking the doctor in one of the appointments, I said, how come you, like all these people are getting cancer? Like, you know, and he's like, well, you know, we just think the testing is probably better than it used to be. And, you know, I could, I could just tell he didn't know what he was talking about. You know, he, he didn't know. And so at the time, my mom, um, she made it through that and she's still alive today, which is crazy. She's 20 plus years later, 30 years later. But um, I knew I needed to change my diet. I knew something was wrong because I, I used to, <clears throat> excuse me, work out a lot. I was really fit, played sports. But I knew I needed to change my diet. And a friend of mine gave me a book called Fit for Life. And that was like Harvey Diamond. Do yeah. you remember that book? I had the, I, we're the same age. Okay. So I just want to pop. My mother got diagnosed with non Hodgkin's lymphoma in 1997 when I was 18. Oh, yeah. Okay. <laughs> so, wow. Yeah. And she's still alive too. But yeah, I'm wow. just like, what? This is crazy. But yeah. Oh my gosh. <laughs> wow. That's crazy. And so, yeah, like, for, because at the time I was working out, but I'd go eat pizza and I'd eat pizza while I was working out kind of thing. And yep. I just knew I got to change, you know, I could, it's easy for me to work out, but not easy to change my diet. And it just all seems so overwhelming. Like what diet do you follow and all that stuff. And so he gave me that book and it, it just kind of, everything made sense. Cause in that book, he's talking about food combining and he was talking about, he's more of a raw vegan. Um, and I went down that rabbit trail for a long time, but, um, he talks about food combining and enzymes and preventing disease and reversing cancers using this and understanding the pancreas and all the stuff. And I was like, Oh my gosh, like, and so everything sort of clicked. And that's when I went into full blown raw food vegan for seven years. Wow. <laughs> and I was a hundred percent raw food vegan from Oh three to 2010. Wow. Um, and I was following David Wolf and a part of the best day ever and doing all that stuff. And, you know, I don't look at that as being negative. I mean, that was a time of unbelievable growth. And I woke up so much during that time to everything that's going on. Um, and so I just realized in 2010, I thought to myself, this is a really extreme diet. And I knew it. And I thought to myself, if I keep doing this for 30 years, say 40 years, I can't go back at that time. If I cause any damage to my gut now, or any like long-term damage, I can't go back and fix that. 
I mean, I could fix it at the time, 30 years in the future, but I can't go back and fix the problem, you know? And so I was thinking more of like the Buddhist mindset, like take the middle path, you know? And so I was thinking, okay, I'm going to start introducing some animal foods, even though I felt great doing it. I had no reason to stop. I felt good, but I was thinking I'm going to introduce some animal foods so that in case I'm wrong, at least it won't be too wrong. You know what I mean? And so, um, and so I just started doing that. And then I realized like, oh, wow, that was way too extreme and, and stuff. And so um, during that whole time, I was thinking like, there's no real radio shows to listen to. Like there's no real podcast. I would, I was a member of the best day ever. And I listened to that, but it wasn't like a radio show. Um, and then, so in 2012, I figured, you know what, I know enough to ask somewhat good questions. So maybe I'll just start my own show. And that's how it started. So, <laughs> that's so cool. That's insane. Yeah. I, the raw vegan thing. So I was a yoga teacher um, oh. and I did vegan for a while and I tried to do the raw vegan, but my body was not having it. I could not mm -hmm. do it. So it's just so interesting how some people, and I, you know, I was in carnivore community for a long time. And so I, I know people can be super dogmatic about diets, but I still am like, you know, s certain people I think can get away with, with different diets for longer than others. I still haven't figured out the mechanism of that yet, but mm -hmm. it's, yeah, it's, it's really strange. I think it has a lot to do with um, your ancestry, you know, the time in your life, you do something, some experiment like that, yeah. um, your overall health, your toxic exposure, whether or not you're vaccinated as a kid, or you had, oh, yeah. you know, antibiotics and drugs and stuff. And, yeah. and so there's a lot there, but um, I felt good doing it. And that's the thing. It's like, wow. I felt really good, but I just thought like, if I'm wrong, I can't go back and fix it, you know, so right. I, I'll take that middle path and just hope for the best, you know? Yeah, that's awesome. <laughs> yeah. yeah. So raw vegan to host and then just things just kind of went from there. Was it always a health based show? Or were you just like, I'm just going to talk about whatever happens and bring on whoever I want? Or was it just always health based? Well, it was always health based, although I'm interested in a ton of topics outside of health that I don't really talk about within the health community, um, like history and science and all that kind of stuff. And, um, but it was always, it, it was difficult because I didn't want it to be like a general show because, you know, if someone's following me for health stuff and then I start talking about history, then those people are going to be like, ah, whatever. So um, I, I kept it more health based, and I've been just kind of keeping it that way. Every now and then, I'll post some stuff on Instagram, you know, that kind of is not health related, you know. But um, you know, it's fun though. <laughs> yeah. yeah. And you've got you've got how old are your sons now? Are they four or five? Going on five. Yeah. Yeah. How has that yeah. changed the way that you? view things or the content that you put out or has it? Um, it hasn't really, it's funny because like a lot of times I'll see these memes out there. You probably see them where like, you know, to take care of yourself, you know, first and stuff like that. And really, and it's like, it's like, I I'm already doing that. So it's not like, Oh, I'm, I'm putting too much into the kids and I'm not taking care of myself. There's not that I, I already take care of myself. Um, but it's been really challenging because, um, you know, we're, you know, my wife's family is completely normies, you know, they've taken all the sharp things, you know, all boosted and Same. yeah. And my it's family. like, um, yeah. So it's a little bit challenging. My parents are, you know, way more awake, you know? And so, but it's been challenging. Like, you know, our kids, um, you know, haven't had any sharp thing in their arm. They they've never had, never even been to a pediatrician, um, nothing. And they are just, knock on wood, have the best health ever. You know, they sleep for like 12 hours a night. Uh, we have the red lights on at home. You know, we, you know, limit their exposure to devices and um, get them outside as much as possible, put them in the, you know, you know, take their shoes off, get grounded. Yeah. And um, we're very fortunate in that way. And we feed them really well. And so um, I think one of the biggest things for me, I don't know, like for me, it's, the, you know, this time, it's so sketchy with, you know, the way the world is going and the ideologies that are out there. Mm -hmm. And it seems as if like the whole point is to get people to lose connection. Cause we're kind of talking about this a little bit, lose connection to who they are, mm -hmm. you know, like, am I a man or am I a woman? Am I straight? Am I gay? Whatever the case may be. And there seems to be this 
super powerful agenda to get people to be this more fluid mm -hmm. where I'm not this thing or another, I'm non-binary, right? I can be whatever right. I want. Right. And I think that w over time, what that does to someone it is it loses their connection to who they really are. Mm -hmm. And I feel like it's really important for kids to understand their ancestry, mm -hmm. to understand who they are, what they're here for, why they're here, where they came from and have a stable base upon which to make that the foundation instead of, oh, I could be this today and that tomorrow. Um, you know, so having, I always look at families, like I used to train in jujitsu and I used to train under, um, in the Hoist Gracie and the Gracie Academy. And I remember like their family always had this family lineage of like these masters. Right. And wow. so I always remember like, they always had this deep reverence for like their grandfather and their father and, you know, for bringing this art to the world. And there was such deep respect and reverence for them. Um, because it was like this whole family thing. It's like, I'm sure when they're babies are like, okay, you're a Gracie now, this is a big deal. Like, you know, and so training them up in that way to be understanding of who they are. And like, this is a big deal to be a part of this family, you know, and represent us well. And, you know, I, I think that whole philosophy is completely lost right now. You know, kids have no idea who they are, what they want to do, anything, you know? Yeah, it was, you know, the difference between being pregnant with my daughter 15 years ago when I was in my 20s, you know, and then in my 40s, it was uh, very different conversations that I had with my husband before her and before my son. Um, mm -hmm. With her, I just took a lot of stuff for granted. I just kind of trusted blindly everything that was laid out for me, trust the doctors, trust this, trust that. And then that trust was obviously shattered. And so with my son, before we even started to conceive, I said, listen, you have to be on the same page with me that I likely want to homeschool. I'm not uh, going to be doing any cosmetic alterations to his body when he's born. Uh, we're not going to be injecting anything to him. So we have to be on the same page here because he's he has been in medical sales for the last 13 years and works with a lot of doctors and is still very much in the allopathic world. Um, uh. But he knows what happened to our daughter and has seen the damage that those things have caused. And so it's like, before we did even start trying to have a baby, we had to be on the same page with that. And, and we talk about it all the time. We're like, I don't, you know, where we live here, we live in the city of Atlanta. There is no way in hell you could pay me to send my son to the public school, because I feel like there is like this agenda to to get the kids brainwashed and i don't want to sound like a you know conspiracy theorist or what or calm i don't know maybe i do uh yeah. maybe i am but uh <laughs> i think we all are without knowing it <laughs> all are, let's just pull out our tinfoil hats at this point but yeah. I, I just i feel like the kids now it's like they're really really going after our children and this yeah. is not being talked about enough yeah it's i i think that too and i think it all you know this the breakdown of the family and it's you know, when a kid doesn't understand their family line or their lineage or their ancestry, they don't know from a deeper spiritual perspective where they come from. You know, when you lose touch with that, that history, you lose touch with the core of who you are. And if you don't have anything that's higher than you in terms of at least the family line, then you, you don't know how to represent yourself in the public space, you know, like you don't have a true deep understanding of who you are and why you're here. And if you can figure that out, then all of this nonsense that's been going on in the last couple of years goes away. Because yeah. if you realize like most people are out there, they don't know who they are. They don't know, you know, why they're here. They don't know where they're going and they don't know their history and right. they don't know what they want to do in their life. Like, you know, should I do this? Should I do that? And you look at the vast amount of just waffling types of people where I don't know, there's good reasons for this. There's good reasons for that. Should yeah. I do this? And it's like that self-directiveness is gone, that autonomy, that full deep understanding that like, I'm going to do this and I'll take some input, but I know who I am. And if this fits in with the direction that I'm going, like I want to achieve X, Y, Z, or I want to go in this direction. And if making this small decision here fits in line with that direction I'm going, then I'll do it. And then if it doesn't serve me in that way, then I'll let it go. But that whole line of thinking is just sort of like, we get these kids in this generation, they're just like bouncing from one career to another. They don't know what they're doing. And to me, I think that's where we become super vulnerable, you know? Yeah.
I agree. I feel like we need that strong family connection and just to understand who we are, where we came from. And, you know, a lot of, unfortunately, a lot of parents, I think, are working a lot. You know, they don't have the luxury of being able to be with their children, uh, you know, for financial reasons. And I feel like it's, that's tough too, because it's like, maybe they can't necessarily afford to homeschool or, or it just isn't on the table for them. And so I think, you know, just bringing this kind of information out there, helping people understand kind of what's going on and the importance of getting your kids to really, really be bought into their family lineage, who they are, all of that stuff is, is so, so important. Yeah, I think so too. And I think it's like, for me, you know, when I was training in jujitsu, my teacher gave me the nine part audio series called, um, it was, it changed my, I, I must've listened to it probably at least 50 times. It was by Jim Rohn and it's called the challenge to succeed. Mm -hmm. And it's like a nine part audio series. And I think at the time it was like CDs or something like that. Cause this was like 2005, um, or six or seven or something like that. But I must have listened to that a million times. And I think the, the overall general idea that I got from that was like taking radical responsibility for everything in your life. You know, like if you can't, um, you know, afford to send your kid to a certain school or, you know, just figure out what you have to make sacrifices are and just, and just make those sacrifices. Cause it seems like, I don't know if you're seeing this, but we, we have a generation right now of people that are, are just complainers. Yes. I wish my life was this way. I wish I could do this. I can't do yeah. this, this. And it's like, wow, okay, everything is your decision. Right. Your, your level of health now or lack thereof is, is a direct result of the decisions you made. And the, you know, this idea of going to a doctor and having them tell you or a lab test or some natural doctor tell you, you know, how your body is like, we're, we're just giving over our power. And I think that, gosh, we got to get away from that, you know? Yeah. And, and like we were talking about before we turn on the recording, I think people are just so low dopamine. And I think that that also has to do with the light. You know, we've got a phone blasting in our face all the time, and that is just ruining your dopamine levels. And so if you are constantly addicted to your phone or your TV, your iPad, your device, you're just lo looking at these things all the time and you're being told what to do all the time, you're going to be a lot more likely to just latch on to a specific narrative and you're a lot less sure of yourself. And I think that's one of the biggest problems with the generation coming up is that they've had, I didn't have a, I had a pager in high school when I wanted yeah. to like go hang out with people. I would like jump out my window because I would like see them driving up the street. I'm like, okay, I'm going to jump out. You know, like yeah. <laughs> that's so I, rad. Until I was like 25. I mean, I'm 43, yeah. 44. In a couple <laughs> of months, so I'm, I'm grateful for that that kind of like disconnection from social media and the way that I was brought up, because I think it gave me more of a chance to think for myself, you know? Mm -hmm. um, yeah. Yeah. And that's this idea of altering the chemistry of the brain through lowering dopamine. You know, that's something that I know Dr. Cruz talks about and it's mm -hmm. like, it's so true. What is the result of 20 years of that? You know, mm -hmm. we don't know. Right. Um, you know, I think we're so, seeing, I mean, I think yeah. we're, I think we're seeing it play out online and then in just society as well, because I think this, my husband was telling me the people who are the kind of strongest of like, let's follow what we're being told. Let's follow the narrative is the young generation that they are so bought into these narratives. Um, and I'm like, wow, this is the power of just being hypnotized by these devices and, and mm -hmm. having that low dopamine, you just will kind of just believe what you're told. And I think that that's, I don't know, like I said, I don't want to sound like conspiracy theorists, but I feel like that's part of the plan is to get people hooked. So they don't question, you know? Yeah. And I think that too, like at the very beginning, when this all started happening, what, three years ago now, um, I was fortunate enough because I'd been listening to so much, you know, alternative radio and information for years. And I've been through the swine flu and all those other ones that they tried to get us with. And, um, you know, and so when this came out, I knew from day one that there was nothing to this. This was, this was no big deal. If, it, if it's even real and all that. Um, but I was originally thinking like, wow, we have social media now, right? Because back then, just three years ago, there wasn't the censorship there is now. And so I thought to myself, okay, if people believe it, it's going to be the older folks who are not online and they're just watching the news. Right. And I said, surely the young generation, they're going to see right through this, but then they brought censorship out. Mm 
-hmm. And then, then the, all the woke ideologies and stuff like that started coming out. Mm -hmm. And then you realize like, wow, they captured them too. You know? Yep. Am amazing. Brilliant. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. It's, it's funny. Like the older generation, actually the, the baby boomers, I feel like are a little bit more, uh, on our, our line of thinking a lot of yeah. them, you know, you know, um, yeah, it's, it's real interesting to watch. <clears throat> totally. Yeah. And I think that, I think more and more people are waking up. I heard less than 2% want the, um, additional, you know, oh, things in the arm, you know, so there's, so they're, they're, they're trying to roll that out and people are saying no. And, you know, it's, it's interesting because my wife's parents, um, you know, they, they've, they're triple everything, you know, my um, sisters and their kids. Yeah. <laughs> yeah it's and even her parents said, now we're done with them. Wow. You know, so what, did, what are your, your sister and all that? Are they getting more? Yeah. It's, they think I'm crazy. Blame it on the fact that I was yoga teacher. You know, I've always been kind of the black sheep of the family. Totally. Dye my hair purple and the Doc Martens in high school. It was like yeah. the doc And then I became the yoga teacher weirdo who's juicing right. everything. And then I went carnivore, <laughs> uh, yeah. steak for two years. And so they're, they just, they kind of are like, you know, um, yeah with me and, and that's, I'm close with them. I'm super close with them, but they definitely have bought into this whole narrative. And it's, it's hard because their kids, I've watched their kids, um, have reactions and it's, it makes me really sad. Cause those are, those are, that's my family too. Um, yeah. And it's hard because it, it shows the level of, of brainwashing that's out there because they saw what happened to my daughter. And sometimes I think they don't actually remember or they don't believe it, um, but wow. they saw that happen in real time. And then they still, all the years later, chose to do the same thing with their kids. And so it's just one of those things. My husband is like, why don't you ever say something to them about this? And I'm like, they know how I feel. Um and that's, yeah. And when the whole thing was starting, I was trying to get pregnant, like, and they were, they were pushing me. They're like, well, if you're trying to get pregnant, you need to get this thing. And I'm like, uh, no, oh. that's a, no. <laughs> wow. <laughs> yeah, that's they, unreal. Yeah. They were like, cause then your baby will have immunity and blah, blah, blah. And I'm like, no, uh, uh, um, yeah. and we, we did get in some disagreements at that point. Cause I was like, I'm not doing that. Um, no, I mean, my husband's not doing it. I'm not doing it. And yeah, it was, it was a little tense time, but then <laughs> now we are where we are. And I still don't know that they are seeing what you and I see with information coming out. I mean, that is yeah. available to everyone, um, yeah. which again, shows the level that people are kind of plugged into their devices and, and just kind of living their life at this level of um, not, you know, not being really super aware. You know, I, at this point, I, I'm kind of over trying to wake people up. I don't know. You probably feel like this I'm too. Totally yeah. Over it. That's how, that's why I like my husband. Yeah. I'm, like, I'm not going to, I'm just not, I'm going to live my life and they can live their lives and we can still be family and have family stuff, but I'm not, it's not my job to try to tell people these things anymore. Like they got to figure it out themselves. Yeah. And I think that too, like, you know, for me, just realizing everyone gets to have their journey and yeah. everyone in my uh, like inner circle knows what I think about certain things. So they all can ask me some questions if they're interested. So they know where I stand with stuff. Yeah. And so if they choose not to ask me any questions, so if they choose not to ask me any questions, um, they're, and they go get something like that and they get injured, uh, then their suffering as a result is part of their journey. And I just have to support them in that, you know? And so it's just, I hope you're enjoying today's episode with Justin from extreme health radio. Again, reminder, if you want the full unedited version, that's going to be linked down there in the show notes to check it out on audio only Apple or Spotify. And I want to thank one more sponsor of today's episode. That's going to be upgraded formulas. You can use code Yogi 12 or Yogi. If you've already used that one before to save at upgraded formulas, my go-to source for understanding the mineral balance in my body. I always say a blood test is only going to tell you what's happening today, right now. A hair tissue mineral analysis will actually let you know what's been going on over the last 60 to 90 days. 
as well as give you a roadmap to what you should be doing to help balance those minerals for, for your long-term health. So again, check out Upgraded Formulas, use code YOGI12 or YOGI to save. And for the full unedited episode, make sure you check out the link down in the show notes to my audio only podcast. Let's go ahead and get back into the episode. To me, it wasn't that big a deal to, to I was never worried that I would catch something or I, I'd hug someone and get, you know, never worried about that at all. But for me, it, it was, it's kind of fun to see how much energy can I have? How much can I produce? How much can I help people? Yeah. How much information can I learn? How empowered can I be? Um, you know, and so taking care of my health has been something that's been, you know, a lot more fun in the last couple of years, because, you know, it's not like, oh, I want to take care of myself so that I don't get some sickness. Right. It's like, okay, I, I need to have energy. I need to be able to work. I need to be able to help people and stuff like that. And so seeing how healthy you can become versus doing something so that you don't get sick to me are two different things. You know, one's more of a like a, a low dopamine, you know, woe is me, I have to protect myself from this thing that's going to come kill me versus like how healthy can I become and how much energy can I have so that I can do my task, whatever it is I'm supposed to do. It's different, you know? Exactly. Exactly. Yeah. So what are your favorite things to do to take care of yourself? Like if it's like, I don't like to call it biohacking, but it's, I guess yeah. it's kind of biohacking. Like what's, what are your favorite routines? Um, for me lately, uh, I do quite a bit of things every day. Um, I, I try to, you know, if I'm working, I try to sit or stand up as much as I can, you know, right now we're sitting, but I try to stand up as much as I can. Um, I try to get outside multiple times throughout the day, you know? So like if I work for an hour and a half or an hour, I'll just go out for a second or two ground, you know, get some sunlight in my eyes, um, and reconnect, um, I, I've been doing a lot with ozone lately. So I've been doing like ozonated water and rectal um, insulfations and sinus insulfations and stuff like that. Um, so I've been doing a lot with that and molecular hydrogen and sauna therapy and um, PEMF. And these are all little things that I do sort of after the kids go to bed, you know, like my wife and I will hang out for a little bit and then I'll go do all my sort of treatments at night before I fall asleep, you know, but um I feel like in today's modern world, you have to do, if you want to, you know, lack of a better word, some sort of biohacks, um, whether that's just getting outside or being in nature more, or, you know, something that would be probably more effective than all of that would be simply taking your laptop outside and working outside. Mm -hmm. You know, that would be more beneficial than all that stuff, I would imagine, you know, so yeah. just reconnecting with nature to me has been, you know, super, super important. Um, how about you? Oh yeah. I mean, that's what I'm doing right now is out here. I try to record. We have a nice office downstairs. That's supposed to be my podcast studio, but I don't think I've recorded maybe like two episodes down there. <laughs> nice. Nice. As, as much as I can bring my laptop out here and work and it's Georgia. So I, you know, do it as often as I can. And then I've got my little biohacking house, um, that it was, it's, it was like a little shed. And then I, we kind of built it out and it's got a sauna and it's got a Morosco forge and I'm getting a, um, a fire, nice. like a firehawk, which is like a, a full body, um, red light panel from EMR tech. Oh, wow. It's going to be, uh, interesting. I've got, an, Oh, I haven't opened my ozone machine yet, but I got an ozone machine. Nice. Um, so yeah, the, I, that's <laughs> my, wow. that's my shed. Um, yeah. <laughs> I just bought a spring aqua for the kitchen, which we love. It's got uh, structured molecular hydro hydrogen water. I mean, it's, oh. it's amazing. So I, yeah, I just, and outside, I mean, my husband knows in the morning, like don't turn the lights on or your wife, it's the, the turning the lights on is like the equivalent of like, I don't know. It's like a, it's a big no, no. Like if I yeah, turn yeah. on overhead lights, I'm like, ah, so he just does it. <laughs> he doesn't bother. <laughs> like, yeah. Cause he's used to it. Right. Yeah. yeah he's like, it's so freaking dark in this house. And so like turn on some yeah. of my bulbs, but, um, I do a lot so, of, so do you have like in your house, do you have mostly the red and incandescent style bulbs yeah, or I have, yeah, mostly the red incandescents. I've got some amber bulbs too. Um, so what does your husband think about that? Hates it. Does he? <laughs> yeah. I can't really? tell what color these socks are. Damn it. Like, uh, yeah. <laughs> I know. 
because he'll like we have one navy sock and one black sock i'm like just go outside and you can tell there like yeah yeah, yeah so. i know it makes it really challenging but it's interesting too because my wife is into all this stuff uh, because she's just really open-minded but she never would have gotten to where she is now if it weren't for me because yeah. i just started blazing the trail kind of like you and she just kind of followed and she's into it but um like the other day, I think we sw switched out the lights to the back to the white bulbs for like a day or something. I forget why, but she walked in at night and turned them on and it was expecting the the red bulbs, right? Yeah. And it was like, whoa. And she told me, she was like, oh my gosh, that's so overpowering. I can never go back to those lights again. Mm -hmm. I'm like, that's how it is, right? You get used to it and your circadian rhythm gets used to that. Mm -hmm. um, the way I look at it is like, you know, like this whole notion of, of having these lights on at night yep. is so, so ancestral, ancestrally wrong. I mean, you know, we're never, you know, supposed to have this amount of light at night. And so, yeah. you know, if I can't see something, if I was living in the forest and I was living under firelight at night, I wouldn't complain because the firelight's not good enough. That would just be the way it is, you know? Right. Exactly. Um, yeah. Yeah. It's, <laughs> He's get he's getting used to it. He's he slowly over the last like I guess I've been doing this for a solid two and a, a year and a half, two years now mm -hmm. um, yeah. with the stuff. And he's like, "All right, this doesn't seem like it's going away, so <laughs> I'll, I'll 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 allow it." <laughs> She's not going to. That's funny. Go. <laughs> yeah, yeah, typically what I'll do if I'm recommending altering light environments and stuff, I'll usually recommend people to wear the glasses for the you know for themselves first. That way they're not subjecting their spouse, you know, because they're the ones that are just caught in the crossfire. They're like, you know, what's all this light stuff. So, but eventually once you start doing the glasses, you're like, you know what, I, I got to do the lights too, because it's, it, it's just so much better because, you know, th those frequencies of lights hitting your skin, you know, oh yeah, is we an got impact on the skin too. Yeah. Yeah. All the, yeah. So yeah, I just convinced my husband because we had a, a big screen over the TV at our old house. And then we just moved to this house and we have a bigger TV. And he's like, I can't watch this thing. It hurts my eyes. I'm like, well, I know a guy who can make a screen to go over the, the TV. And that's, so we're finally going to get one for the new house. <laughs> but did you, yeah. is that like from low, I know lowbluelights.com has that. Is that what you're talking about or something no, different? No, his name's Phil and his company is Shop uh, Wakan, W A K N. And oh. he'll like custom make a screen for you. Like he has his own business, like custom making screen. Yeah. W Shop W A K N. W A. So, K okay, N. I'll check it out right now. Yeah. I never heard of that. W -A yeah, he kind of does it out of his house. Like, I don't think he makes a ton of money doing it. I think it's just kind of like a passion project. But I always recommend people if they have small kids or they have stubborn spouses, if you can get him to make a screen. And I don't like the red one, but I'll well, the yellow one works pretty well. Um, I'm like, get him to make you a screen. <laughs> I like that. That's really cool. Okay, yeah. Because yeah. we yeah. use right now, we use Iris Tech. You know, um, yeah, so I've got on my computer. Yeah. Yeah. That's a good one. I like yeah. that. I used to use flux for a while, but then Iris tech is just way, way better. Yeah. 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 Cool. Yeah. It's funny because I don't, I don't trust, I don't know what it is. I just don't trust anybody or any technology or anything. So I'll still wear the blue blocking glasses with, because right now I have, um, I think my thing is set to like 1690 Kelvin on mm. iris tech and um so it's slightly amber you know and i just i don't trust because i'm just reading studies like i read a study a, a little while ago talking about the high frequency blue light um mm -hmm. causing you know damaging the cells in the eyes leading to macular yeah. degeneration yes. Um, yes. and so my mom is dealing with that right now which i think is part of the you know chemo detox and stuff like that but you know like we cannot stare at these screens and 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 think our vision is going to be there when we're 90, if we're still alive, you know, it just yeah. won't be there. Well, the crazy thing is when I first got into this whole light thing, I distinctly remember not being able to read something across the room. And I was like, well, I did just turn 40. So it's probably just, I'm just getting older, but I started wearing the blue blockers, started mitigating my light environment. And within just a couple of months of doing that, all of a sudden I could read stuff across the room again. And so I think, wow. Yeah. yeah that's a huge thing that people need to be doing if to protect their eyes. 
Yeah, I, it's so it, it's so big. It's funny because just recently I was looking at something. You ever read like a supplement label? You know, the labels are always super small, like type so tiny. Um, yeah. And I'm reading it at night under red light. And I'm thinking to myself, dude, my eyes are not working right. I can't read this. But then I realize it's just a lighting thing, right? Yeah. So <laughs> yeah, absolutely. Absolutely. Yeah. <laughs> well, That's funny. Yeah. Well, I'd love to know, I guess, what has been your craziest experience podcasting, if there has been one? In terms of like doing recording the show or? Just anything, like recording the show, meeting somebody, mind blown, just anything. Oh, gosh. Well, there's a couple of experiences I, I had with a guest. I won't say his name, but he was he made me sign um, a, a, dig, a, dig, a digital signature before we started recording um, about uh, how do I say this? <laughs> um, but basically that it, it was for legal purposes because this guest had been in prison for multiple years. Um, and, and he was like, he was, he came off super aggressive. Um, and he just wouldn't talk to me without me first sending a digital signature, agreeing to whatever terms that he had for the podcast. I thought, wow, that's really strange. But then when I looked into his past, you know, I realized like he's been in jail and the FDA had been going after him quite a lot. And so he couldn't leave anything to chance in that way. Um, so that was kind of interesting. My wife was like, what is this? You know, like, cause she was on that show. <laughs> um, but I think overall, like, I, I think for me, the overall arching narrative when it comes to what I've been learning is just keeping an open mind and not attaching, you know, to any one narrative or one person or one dogma or whatever the case may be. But I think that ultimately, just the shows that I've done about reconnecting with nature, to me, it's the simplest thing that we can all do. You don't need you know, thousands of dollars to buy uh, you know, a red light panel or a sauna or whatever. Just get outside more. You know, it's that yeah. simple. Um, and and you know, managing light environment to me is one of the biggest things that you could do. And it's relatively cheap. Like you know, for 50 to 100 bucks, you can get a pair of glasses that will last for a long time. You could buy some light bulbs for 10 or 15, 20 bucks. Um, and get a handful of those. And that will make such a big difference, you know? Yeah. Um, and um, I, I just like exploring different concepts of health. And I just kind of like you, I, I love to sort of sit on the outside and watch all the drama happen, you know? <laughs> yeah, I try not to get involved in it, honestly, because it, it can yeah. get really out of hand <laughs> for sure. Yeah, it's really weird. So you think it has to do with like the dopamine um, aspect? I think that plays a big role in it. I think that, pe like I said, I think people are just kind of want, even in the alternative space, they look to someone as kind of like this guru person because they speak with a lot of authority um, and they come off just super, super confident and people are looking for that. They're looking to attach to, to, to specific people that are spouting off ideology. And um, I think there, there can be a lot of drama involved in that and a lot of egos. And I've had, you know, I've had people kind of <laughs> come for me or try to trigger me or bring me into that drama before. And I think the smartest thing you can ever do if you have a podcast or if you have a platform is just to stay the hell out of it. And, um, mm -hmm. you know, like, like we were talking about before I turned the camera on, I'll never like type something or message someone or email somebody. Um, negative about another person. I just, I just won't do it, you know? Yeah. Because everything is public now, right. and, you know, like even a private message is public really. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Someone mm -hmm. could take a screenshot. Yeah. 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 It's, um, it, it's a lot of drama in this world, in this field, but I think it's the same kind of people. It's like the same energy of the average normie person wanting a Dr. Fauci to come tell them what to do, you know? Um, it's ironic. there's a guest. Yeah, it, it is. And we had a guest one time and he's a natural doctor. He's a former anesthesiologist and um, he's become a friend of ours and just the greatest guy. And he's in Texas and he works now primarily with like um, emotional, spiritual kind of healing on the deeper levels because he saw where the FDA was going. You know, they're coming after supplements, they're coming after light devices, they're coming after ozone machines. So they're coming after all this stuff. And so he's working on the deepest level of areas that you can't, FDA can't take that away from, you know, working with someone. 
And so um, he was working with his lady who had breast cancer and, um, and she was obviously under the care of her primary doctor, but also seeing him. And he has these, you probably heard of this. Um, it's the, it's a heart coherence device that you can put on and measure your autonomic heart rate and stuff like that. Um, and it basically tells you when you're in coherence, it tells you when your nervous system is agreeing with what you're saying or speaking. Wow. And they can do that through measuring, I guess, the frequency of the heartbeats and stuff like that. Wow. And so this lady was saying that she didn't want to do chemo. She didn't want to do any of this kind of stuff. And, you know, she was talking to this, my friend, the doctor about the different therapies that she could do. And as they're talking, uh, her, her primary medical doctor calls her up on the phone and says, you have X, Y, Z cancer. Um, you have to do this much of chemo and this is how we're going to cure you. And we're going to do three rounds of chemotherapy followed by three rounds of radiation and blah, blah, blah. And this was all on speakerphone. And as the doctor was saying that on the phone, her heart coherence monitor was on green, which means she's in total complete coherence with that, which is weird because you would think that, you know, someone like her, she's seeking out alternative information from my friend, the doctor. Um, but when the medical doctor told her, this is what they're going to do. And this is how they're going to cure her and blah, blah, blah. So it, it, it shows you that even on a, on a natural level, we want the authority of others of people to tell us what to do. Like that just resonates with us when someone has confidence and they tell us what, this is how it is. This is how the body works and blah, blah, blah. And this is what we're going to do. Like the human mind just resonates with that so much mm -hmm. versus like, I'm going to go outside the paradigm and I'm going to start treating myself and taking responsibility for myself. That's like being cast out to sea on a boat all by yourself, mm -hmm. you know, and we just don't naturally like to do that. Right. But ultimately that's where I believe the healing is for all of us is to take full responsibility and say, I'm going to do X. If I'm going to do chemo, I'm going to believe in it. I'm going to do it. I'm going to be faithful to it. But if I'm going to do natural stuff, I'm going to believe in that this wishy washy doubting stuff. Yeah. I, it's terrible. I agree. And, and just kind of talking about people and, and what they resonate with. It's funny. I don't know if you've had this experience. Um, I read my YouTube comments, not all of them, because some of them are just like, let's put that weird, in the toilet, please. Um, <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> uh, don't type it, just throw it in the toilet, please. Yeah. <laughs> um, <laughs> but when I have when I had like a Jim Stevenson Jr. on the comments, he's not a doctor. He's not a doctor. They're not a doctor. You know, if you have somebody that's challenging these health norms like Jim does, uh, I know you've had Jim on your show a number of times, people will attack and say he's not a doctor, you know, and, and they it's weird, right? with the, which, you know, yes, to be a doctor, you have to go through a lot of training, you have to go through a lot of hard work, it shows dedication. But they don't always know everything. And I think people are, are more and more at that place. But even on my channel where people know, it's like, we're looking outside the box here. When I have a guest on that's challenging norms like that, it's like, they're not a doctor. They're not a doctor. I'm like, no, he's not. <laughs> I know. And <laughs> to me, it's on this topic than any doctor I've ever talked to. Seriously. I know. Right. And it's like, you know, to research something out of passion to me, it, it shows way more depth of knowledge and understanding than researching it because you have to, in order to get a degree, because right. you already have like a hundred thousand dollars invested in this degree, even though you don't want to do it anymore. Right. You know, exactly. Like, like that to me shows real passion when someone's just doing it on their off hours, researching, um, uh, yeah, going back to what you mentioned, that, that Jim Stevenson stuff is really interesting. You know, all the vitamin D stuff. Yeah. Um, you know, that stuff is really interesting. And it sort of falls right in line with the quantum, you know, Dr. Cruz stuff as well, you know, because uh, I know he's not a big fan of taking exogenous vitamin D supplementation, you know. Mm -hmm. um, and so, yeah, I think stuff like that is is wild. And I think that's what people want. They want a doctor. If this guy's a doctor, I'll believe him. You right, know? right, exactly. And, uh, and I think that... Like they don't want to believe it in, intuitively deep down in their subconscious. And so they use the fact that he's not a doctor to agree with their preconceived notion that he can't be right, you know, right. because I don't like it. Exactly. Know? Agree. A hundred percent. So weird, right? To me, it's like if someone, if someone is a doctor, I look at that as a negative. I'm like, dude, you're a doctor. A I'm not going to listen to you. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> That's not a good trait to have, you know? Yeah. I mean, that's when I was going through the fertility journey, that was when I really lost my faith in medical profession because 
the doctors were telling me all kinds of stuff. And I, thankfully, I was not vibrating with that. That wasn't coherent for me. I didn't believe it because if I had, I never would have successfully gotten pregnant. But I had doctors that were like, you're too old. Um, your blood work doesn't look good enough for this. You're going to have to have donor eggs, blah, 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 blah. Like just That's stop. Crazy wasting your money. And then I was like, I don't believe that. And the people that helped me uh, the most were not in fact doctors, you know, not the traditional type at all. You know, um, yeah. that's what I thankfully chose to listen to and, and go down that path. But um, that is really, that was kind of maybe the final straw for me of like trying to put my faith in what somebody that said doctor and even the functional doctors that I was consulting with, it was like, let's give you a thousand dollars a month of supplements and do all this testing. And that was just more wasted money, you know? Yeah, it's terrible. It's terrible. And I think that, uh, you know, for, for doctors to tell you that it's like their first thing is to do no harm. You know, right. that's, that's what they're supposed to do. And the language that doctors use to me is like the most harmful thing mm -hmm. because they're just constantly telling you, you can't do this or whatever the case may be. Um, it's so disempowering and the language itself should be enough to set people off in my yeah. opinion. Yeah. But when you look at people like Jim Stevenson and Morley Robbins or jo or like look at Dr. Cruz, I mean, he's a, he's a doctor that's, you know, he's a neurosurgeon. He didn't right. study any of this stuff. So, so Dr. Cruz might as well not even be a doctor in terms of the knowledge he has of health and nutrition. Right. Because all this stuff, he studied it outside of conventional, you know, exactly. wisdom and teaching. Exactly. And so, you know, he, in my mind, he's not a doctor, right. even though he is, you know, right. Morley's not a doctor, Jim Stevens, is not and all these people are, you know, so extremely knowledgeable in their fields. Uh, and yet, if they don't have a doctor out of their name, uh, against, it's like people are just don't want to believe it. And, exactly. uh, you know, those people, in my opinion, like can't be helped, you know, if no. that's what your criteria is, then, you know, yeah. Go listen to a doctor then. Go follow their advice. <laughs> yeah, there's plenty of them out there that say they have the answers. So go for yeah. it. <laughs> yeah. So when you had Jim on your show, were you um have you had him on multiple times or just once? once. Just I was uh -huh. about to have the baby. I was like a couple of weeks away from having the baby. So yeah, I had him on and then we were gonna do a follow-up, but we haven't done one yet. Um mm -hmm. so yeah, it got a, a huge response on YouTube. Um that people were a little bit uh, freaked out by the show, but yeah. um, overall, well, I, I mean, a positive response. I mean, it's hard to argue a lot about what he's saying, you know, and it's funny because the pro metabolic community are so pro vitamin D and supplementation. But I think that, um, you know, the biggest argument I see on the pro supplementation side, um, at least from the non pro metabolic community is this idea of the uh, I think it's the DHCR7 gene or something like that, the genetic SNP that says you can't make vitamin D from the sun. Um, but Jim's addressed that as well. Um, and so um, I, I just, you know, to me, if it falls in line with nature, God didn't put us on this earth with the notion that we had to take a vitamin D pill. Right. Exactly. Not at all. So <laughs> How did, all, how, right? did we, how did we get here? That's what I always say to people when we talk about food. I mean, that's a bit, you know, you're talking about pro-metabolic and it's like, you got pro-metabolic versus carnivore versus keto versus vegan versus that. And I'm like backing out because yeah. we didn't have uh, pro-metabolic eating. We didn't have uh, vegan. We didn't have a lot of these diets. If there was any diet, um, we didn't even really have carnivore because we would forage for foods when we couldn't get meat. Um mm -hmm what was growing that's what you ate where you lived you know what you caught yeah. and what was growing that's how we got here it wasn't yeah. through slamming all these juices and you know eating pills and stuff and supplementing <laughs> so it's like i just kind of it, it feels really freeing it feels really good to kind of back out of all of that nonsense where people are just infighting in the different communities and then fighting against each other well, that's just stupid i'm like y'all are all missing the point of yeah how how did we get here look at this how did it how do we get here if, if you're if you're doing something different than how we got here it, it may not be the best thing yeah, I know. And it's, it's interesting when you look at these, 
sort of philosophies too, like Jim's stance on vitamin D and, you know, not supplementing it because it causes lots of different calcification issues and stuff like that. And you realize that like vitamin D is so much more than just a simple vitamin. It's like, mm -hmm. like he mentions, it's a secosteroid hormone. And the fact that it can go multiple down multiple pathways based on the sun, the UVB sun exposure that we're exposed to, um, you know, if your body needs X, Y, Z, it's going to convert it to lumisterol or tacosterol or some other hormone that your body needs. And then, you know, once it gets to the, the VDR receptor, there's 2000 genes that your body somehow just knows which genes to turn on and which genes to turn off. Mm -hmm. And then, but when you supplement it, it's, it's like you're forcing it down this specific pathway and that vitamin D, if you call it a vitamin could be mold, like there's 14 different kinds. He mentions of 25 OHD, which is the kind we test for. There's 14 different kinds of that. And then Adam says on our, he said this multiple, multiple times of like the lumisterol, the tacosterol and all the pre vitamin D three hormones that your body makes. And then, you know, there's, there's multiple kinds of each one of those different hormones. And so there's orders of magnitude, thousands of different chemicals being made. And so to take a pill and so just understanding that there's a lot more going on. And I think the, the problem is that when people and then getting into natural health, they just think, Oh, vitamin D it's this one yeah. thing. And there's all these studies about it and how good it is not realizing there's so much nuance to how the body works. And I think that's where you and I come in to help people realize at least to get them to understand that there's so much going on when you put a pair of sunglasses on yes. or when you block your skin or put sunscreen on, like there's yeah. so much more happening, you know? Yeah. I, I it's totally agree. and it's, you know, the fertility course I teach with my friend, uh, Carrie Bennett, we were just kind of game, you know, talking about our next cohort and kind of some things we wanted to add to the course. Cause we've run it twice now. And mm -hmm. what we, what we're going to add is our stance on supplements, our, our stance on, uh, parasites and detox, our stance on like, we're going to talk about these things because, and our stance on blood work, our, our stance on genetic testing, because people are living and dying by these things, the supplements, genetic testing, the blood tests, the all the detoxing, and they're not, not having success. They're spending a ton of money. And when you do things in accordance with nature, there's a, there's a coherence that happens within the body. There's a resonance factor that happens within the body. Your the cells in your body can shift like that. The month that I got pregnant, my doctor, because I went for blood testing just to, because I had already been through IVF and I was like, let me just see what my labs look like this month. I'm going to try. Um, if it doesn't yeah. work out, maybe I'll do IVF. She told me that month that I got pregnant, your hormones are not optimal for pregnancy. Your estrogen's too high, blah, blah, blah. This doesn't look good. So I'll see you in, you know, six weeks for we'll start IVF again. And yeah. I, my mind had already said, no, I've been forest bathing, ice bathing, <laughs> red light there. I've been doing <laughs> sunrise suns. I've been doing the deal. I'm getting pregnant. This is happening. And I did. Yeah. And I, that was the month wow. that I did get pregnant. But I tell this to the people in my fertility course, I was told by a doctor, your blood work is not optimal for pregnancy. These hormones are not optimal. This is not going to happen for you this month. I'll see you in six weeks our bodies can shift like that and our bodies can heal and, and far before it shows up in blood work and in testing. So I think people are so attached to, you know, they want to do things. They want to have supplements to take. They want to have things to pop. And that's not necessarily going to get them the true health. The true health is found beyond those things. And, it, you know, it's like I said, I, it's, yeah. I couldn't agree more, you know, and, and like, there's a story that of our twins that, you know, cause I'm a twin, but my twin brother didn't make it. And so I'm a twin, but not really, you know, kind of thing. Yeah. Um, and so I never grew up with a twin, but I am a twin. And so, um, when my wife got pregnant, they, we, we, we were going to do a home birth. Like, like that was the plan, right? Do a home birth. And then we found out it was twins. Um, but before that, the doctor had done, or the, it wasn't a doctor, it was a wellness clinic that they had some, it wasn't an ultrasound. I forget what the device was, but it was basically um, a low radiation thing where they can listen to see the heartbeats and stuff like that, or to listen for the heartbeats. And they said, oh, you know, there's, it sounds like there's a heartbeat. It sounds good, blah, blah, blah. And I said, do you hear more than one heartbeat? And they said, no, it's just one, you know, just one heartbeat. I said, are you sure? And they said, yeah, it's just one. We've been doing this forever. You know, it's one heartbeat. 
And when I left with my wife, where I told her, I said, like, we're having twins. Like, there's no, there's no doubt about it. We're having twins. I don't care what the doctor says. And I just knew it was like a, an inner knowing, just knowing that we were going to have a twin. And I told her that. Uh, and then later on down the line, we had to get one ultrasound. So we got one of them. And during that ultrasound, the, the you know they confirmed it was twins i'm like but this is the thing like doctors don't know like right. like they put a thing on and they were listening for the heartbeats and said there's only one and so i think like i just think that taking control and listening to your intuition like you said like the doctors tell you all your numbers are wrong and yet you know you're getting pregnant right so I don't care what a doctor says, whatever, you know? <laughs> yeah. And I get this all the time in my, my DMS and I'm sure you probably get it too. I have X, Y, Z gene, um, MTH. Uh, oh, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> make That's it terrible. Stop. Please make yeah. it stop. Um, <laughs> it's not that important yeah. guys. It's, yeah. <laughs> a lot of people have it. A lot yeah. of people don't have as many problems as we think that they do, you know, Funny. people are so hung up on these genetic test results and it's like, if you fix your redox potential, you're never going to have to to wrangle with this gene, with this gene, with the SNP. It's not going to ruin your life if you fix your redox potential or your, you know, you're working on your mitochondrial health constantly. Mm -hmm. It's not going to be a thing. Like I have in my family, uh, cancer, diabetes, heart attack, stroke, heart disease. I mean, you name it. It's like at, all over the place. But I'm not really worried about those things because mm -hmm. depression and anxiety. And I was on all these medications for years and years. Um, but I don't worry about those things. And I don't worry about my mental health because I know how to take care of myself now, you know? Um, and I think that's where we really want to empower people. I know you do with your show. Yeah. It's just, you know, I want to get people out of this mindset of being a defeatist mindset, because when you listen to the mainstream, it's like, they're going to tell you that you have this gene. Then you come in the natural space and you say, oh, well, I have the DHCR7 gene. So my body's not going to make vitamin D3 from UVB light. So I'm going to have to supplement it. When you, when you realize like, oh, wow, if I can fix my redox and I can fix my mitochondria and fix my gut microbiome. That one's huge for altering the expression of genes. Uh, if, if you focus on fixing those two things, it doesn't really matter what your gene SNPs are. And I know that, you know, I follow some people in the, you know, genetic SNP space and, you know, they're constantly talking about that. But to me, like, it does make sense to alter some of what you're doing because you may have some genes. But to me, that puts me in a limited mindset. That right. makes me think that like, oh, I can't do something because my gene didn't express. I got this the SNP that doesn't, it's not working. And so, right. oh, well, I'm gonna have to work around it kind of a thing. Right. Whereas I, I, I never like thinking in a limiting way like that, you know? Yeah. Yeah. I think that's, that's the biggest point is just like you, if you think it to be that way, then it will be. And, you know, the more that you're attached to this, these numbers and, and what's on the paper, the more true that's going to be. If you, if you put your faith in that, then that's going to be a true story for you. And mm -hmm. I think allowing people to see beyond that uh, is is just so super important. Totally. Uh, by the way, how how is your mom doing these days? Oh, um, she's not great, but she's still with us. Um, she just had to have a leg amputated about a year ago. So uh, she was diagnosed in ninety seven. You said, yeah. Was it Hodgkin's or non Hodgkin's? Non Hodgkin's lymphoma. Um, and what treatment did she do? chemo radiation stem cell transplant um what else did she do i mean just several rounds of chemo and radiation mainly and wow. it it just essentially like broke her body down and uh when i was she was just in pain a lot too and my dad passed away that year too um the year that oh, she in 90, in 97 yeah oh, yeah wow. he he died of aids that's a whole other freaking drama oh, um wow. story <laughs> Yeah. <laughs> oh man. It's a whole other I just, drama story, but, uh, yeah. I just posted a, a study or, uh, yeah, it was a study in my Instagram stories about, um, blood electrification and the AIDS virus. I saw that. I saw that. <laughs> I did. It's super yeah. interesting. Yeah. So, wow. Okay. So now she just, just recently had to have a leg amputated. Mm, she's just, wow. her health has just been bad ever since the the chemo and she's had to care for herself. I mean, my sisters and I live close and we've tried to do everything we can to help uh, take care of her, but her health has not been that good. The year that I got pregnant with my daughter, which was 07, um, mm -hmm. she had gotten an epidural block in her back because she was in so much pain because the radiation, the chemo just destroys your spine. 
And oh, so yeah. she had gotten epidural block. And I remember I hadn't told her I was pregnant yet. Cause I was like, it was like an oopsie baby. I wasn't sure. You know, I was like, what, am, what the, you know, right. I was a bit quiet. And, um, she that night called me and she's like, I have to go to the emergency room, the epidural, I can't walk. Like it's not, it's never worn, it's not wearing off. Um, so that's how I found, told her I was pregnant as she was in the emergency room. And I was laying on the floor, just like nauseous, like popping Cheerios. Um, uh. But she never walked again after that. So she had basically been in a wheelchair since 2007 um, because oh, of all. Yeah. So she, her health is wow. not for years. And, you know, what um, what what motivates you to be in this? Because it seems like in, in your family, you have health issues as well as I, I think everyone does in yeah. everyone's family. But like what made you did you look at your mom and say, like, I got to go a different path or a different direction? Definitely looked at my mom because she got the, you know, cancer diagnosis when she was my age, when she was uh, 43 and uh, oh, wow. everything has been downhill since then. Um, but also my daughter was the big, the big like spur of like, I got to figure this out because when she lost, when I saw her go from like a normal, happy baby to like lights are off, I went into full force. Like, I got to figure this out. I got to figure this right. out. And we went everywhere. We went to California, New York, and Florida. We went everywhere flying to different doctors to try to do alternative stuff for her. Nothing ever we not, nothing ever brought back what we lost, unfortunately. Right. Um, maybe we didn't meet with the right people because I've and I'm sure I'll get people messaging me, well, you should try this. This'll help. I get a lot yeah. of unsolicited advice on social yeah, media. Yeah. Um, which I appreciate people wow. they, they care. But yeah, that was what pretty much made me go diving headfirst into like true alternative health was just trying to save my daughter and trying to get her back, honestly. Wow. Yeah. It's, it's amazing. Like what brings us, cause it seems like everyone in the natural health space, or at least most people have some kind of story, whether it's them or a, someone close to them going through something and just realizing like, if I don't change what I'm doing, I'm just going to be them in 20 years, you know? Mm -hmm. Um, yeah. And yeah, I see it's... my sisters now struggling with their health. You know, they're, I'm the oldest of three and I see them now getting into their forties and really struggling with their health. And I, I love them dearly, but I worry that some sort of a health crisis is knocking on the door for them. Um, mm -hmm. Because yeah, mm -hmm. if you don't take care of your health and your body, you will probably get these, these things that we have genetic, you know, predispositions to that's how the genes get turned on. Yeah. And especially you, you consider how many different ways we're turning on genes like these days. It's so, yeah. You don't <laughs> Blue light at night. <laughs> yeah. It's so crazy. Just complete lack of connection to the earth. And then you got all these frequencies, non-native EMF, like you mentioned and living in Wi-Fi and all this stuff. And then you look at all the chemicals, like there's been 60,000 chemicals introduced into the environment since the yeah. uh, late 1960s. Mm -hmm. I think there's like 84,000 chemicals that are uh, approved in, co in commerce. And so you look at the chemical exposure and like the, the sharp thing people are taking and the chemicals in food and lack of minerals in the food. It's mm -hmm. amazing how many genes we are turning on just by living yeah. a standard lifestyle. Exactly. That, yeah, that's that was normal. It's insane. And everyone thinks I'm crazy. One of the things I stopped doing when I was trying to get pregnant is washing my hair. <laughs> uh -huh. Yeah. Hair now. And everyone's like, how do you have hair like that? I'm like, just, well, just use water. Um, <laughs> <laughs> just water. <laughs> it's kind of like what we did for like lots of thousands of years, but you know, we, yeah. now we have all these like endocrine disrupting products that we put on our hair and our skin. And I use beef towel on my skin. I use a little bit mm -hmm. of an all natural mascara, but, um, you know, we, we put so many things in our bodies just on a chemical basis that we don't think it's just a normal thing that we do, you know, the nail yeah. polish and it's wild that. because like, if you think about the environment, I know Dr. Cruz talks a lot about this, but if you think about like our environment and how much it's changed from all the different things that we just talked about. Um, but if you look at like, like a firefighter going into a burning building, for example, like, you know, let's say he's a block away, you know, he doesn't need to protect himself that much. Right. And the closer he gets to the burning building, the more protection. So maybe he starts with a mask and then he's, you know, gets 10 feet closer and then the smoke's really coming out. So then he's got to put some, you know, fire retardant clothing on, and then he needs to get an oxygen tank. And the closer he gets to that um, environment being toxic, the more protection he needs to have. And it's crazy because in the same way that as they keep altering our environment, 
with all this stuff, the more things we have to do in order to, you know, regain our redox and, you know, turn our metabolism around and stuff like that and repair the mitochondria. And it seems like it's crazy, but it's no more crazy than like, if you see a firefighter getting close to a building and then the more, the closer he gets, the more equipment he needs. Right. right. Exactly. And so it's no more crazy than that. But in that case, we think, oh, that's normal. But our environment is so toxic that like, if you're not doing some of these things to take care of your health, then, you know, it's not looking good for, yeah. for most people. Exactly. Exactly. That's just why we got to keep doing what we're doing and spreading information. I mean, that's one of the coolest things I think, I don't know about you, but for me, just having a podcast and, and bringing people on that have alternative viewpoints and letting people kind of go down their own rabbit holes and, and learn. Yeah. And it's, it's cool to get that feedback. You know, I get messages. I'm sure you do all the time, emails and messages of people like, thank you for that guest, or thank you for this topic, because I've been really lost and now I finally feel like I have some direction here with my health and I don't feel so lost anymore. I know it's good. And, and, and ultimately like we're just signposts, you know, right. saying, Hey, yeah. here's, here's a cool idea. Here's a cool detox. Here's a cool biohack, whatever, go explore that. You know, if yeah. it resonates with you, go look at that. And, but you know, there, there is no one way, there's no one answer, you know, just go explore. Um, and we're just the signpost, you know? Yeah, exactly. <laughs> it is kind of cool though, being in the background, like, all right, I want to figure out this topic and you know, I can get this person on my, it, it, I think it's, it's fun. I don't know about you, but it's, fun. it's yeah. Yeah. To, to interview different people and just learn for yourself also. Yeah. And it's cool. And I think for listeners as well, cause I listen to a lot of radio shows and podcasts and stuff. And I think for, um, for sometimes for me, I like to listen to shows that are a little more surfacey, like, you know, doing this where we're just talking about concepts mm -hmm. because it makes you feel like you're not alone. Like, yeah. you know, there's other people that are, you know, like to take care of themselves and they're not crazy, you know, right. so yeah. <laughs> hopefully it makes people feel like they got a little tribe or something, you know? Yeah, absolutely. <laughs> absolutely. Yeah. yeah well, I feel like I fun. could, yeah, it, it's so much fun. Um, well, I was saying, I feel like I could talk to you at least another two hours and we probably could, if I didn't have a babysitter. <laughs> <laughs> oh, totally. I hear you. I know what that's like. <laughs> yeah, I know you do. Um, but if, if anyone's listening and they don't know where to find you and, and all of your stuff, can you give us a, a rundown? Yeah. So, um, so these days with all the censorship and all the social media sites changing, um, I, I'll just direct people to our website and I'll have all the social we're on Instagram and Facebook and YouTube and Twitter and Brighton and all these alternative platforms. But I link to them all from extremehealthradio.com and people can just go on there and, uh, you know, subscribe on iTunes, whatever the case may be. Um, you know, there's a million different ways to consume content these days. So um, who knows, like if someone listens to this in 10 years, is there going to be a Twitter? Is there going to be an Instagram? Right. You know, exactly. who knows? Yeah, exactly. So, yeah. So extremehealthradio.com and uh, we do a show. Uh, once a week, although the last couple of weeks we've taken off, but we do a show comes out every uh, Sunday night. And then um, we have 700 shows. So it's like Amazing. those get lost in the archive. So I've been replaying them every night. So if you subscribe on iTunes, there's a show every night around 10 o'clock, um, you know, and some of them go back 10 years, but the information, what I like about what we do is the information. It's not like commenting on what's going on in the world today. It's still relevant no matter how old it is, you know? Yeah. I yeah. like that. I do you too. Know? So that's fun. So yeah, we, it's a lot of fun and I like helping people. And, uh, I, I love it when people wake, wake up, but yeah. I don't love trying to get them to wake up, <laughs> no, you know, done with that. <laughs> yeah, I'm right there with you. <laughs> you're not come yeah. hang. It's cool. <laughs> totally. Totally. So your show, um, how long have you been doing it? two and a half years now, which is, is crazy. It's kind of flown by. Yeah. How many episodes do you have? I have no idea. I've done, I've done one every week for the last two and a half years. I have not missed a single week. So whatever oh, wow. times 52, a hundred and some odd. <laughs> wow. That's awesome. Yeah. 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 Man. yeah. That's cool. And so, um, so who, who's been like one of the more interesting guests? I think my top uh, guest, I think was probably Dr. Cruz. And that was mm -hmm. like the biggest shift where you actually could see me in the room talking to him, curtains drawn, you know, uh, totally, you, you see a transformation after that podcast in the guests sure. that I 
on and the topics that I talk about. And you never see me sitting in a dark room with, uh, with the curtains drawn again after that show. Yeah. Um, it's my most yeah. popular episode ever. So I'm hoping to get him back on in April after he's on Huberman, <laughs> if he'll, if he'll come uh, to my little show again. Uh, I know. Right. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. That's awesome. He's, um, he, he's probably had one of the most profound impacts is, but there's been like a few people, but he's, his information on light is really been a game changer for me as well. Like, you know, there's certain people in their own little niches that really impact me, yeah. but I feel like the light aspect and the non-native EMF aspect affects so much of how our, how healthy our cell membranes are and all that yeah. kind of stuff. And, um, and so th that's been, we've done a number of shows on light, but he's, he's always like, I mean, he's just a master at understanding yeah. all that stuff. It's like, you can't really under understand it all, you know? Yeah. Yeah, and Matt Maruka too is a blast to have on the show. We we our podcast was that's the longest podcast I've ever done. It was almost four hours long. <laughs> oh my goodness! Wow, yeah. you got nothing done that day. Nothing. <laughs> I, I just I posted the whole thing. I was like, should I edit this and put it in parts? And I'm like, no, it's going up. But that was one of yeah. my most popular episodes ever because we were just, I mean, we were talking about Harry Potter. We're talking. I mean, we we're just like going. <laughs> all over the place and talking about light. And there's just it, it was it was a really really fun show. He's got a, a cool way to synthesize Dr. Cruz's work down, you yeah. know? Yeah. Um, and so, yeah, I like that. Um, yeah. What about you? What's, yeah. what's been the most impactful guest that you think you've had on? Um, I would have to say like probably Dr. Cruz. I'd say there's probably three or four. Dr. Cruz on light. I really resonate with and like the work of uh, Morley Robbins and his and information on, on my show. Yep. Yeah, yeah. His his information on minerals is really great. Um, Doctor Richard Massey on like um, on spiritual emotional connection to health, and you know recall healing um, has been really huge because I think that's a part where people just don't think about that, you know? Yeah. Um, and then um, Jim Stevenson's work on vitamin D has been really, really kind of um, eye-opening as well. Um, and, you know, and then I listen to a lot of other people on different shows and I, you know, right now I'm, I'm kind of taken with this one guy's work that I'm, I'm exploring. Um, but it's, it's fun to go down these little rabbit trails and to learn, um, you know, and so I don't know, you know, for me, it's just something where, it's just all about growth and all about learning and understanding and application and um, trying to become healthier because like I, you know, we mentioned before, it's like the most rebellious thing that we could do is take care of our health right now. Agree. hundred percent. So yeah, it's fun. It's fun. Yeah. I like it. <laughs> well, this has been super, super fun and uh, excited to see. I mean, I mean, I put some of it on YouTube. <laughs> But, oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. I tried to, you know, self-censor a little bit. I but. was the one who was not censoring. It's totally my fault. <laughs> but That's funny. I, yeah, it's a great episode. Thank you so much for being here. Oh, for sure. Thanks for having me. Appreciate it.